Well, I had a customer bring in an Xbox One S to be looked at. As you can see, it has a repair ticket on it. It's already been somewhere else. Quoted a price requesting an HDMI repair. Quoted $124.99 requesting liquid damage. No answer on that one. As you can see, it's already been partially opened. Case is really not snapped on it to speak of. Security tabs already out. So I think we can just kind of peel this thing open pretty easily once the tabs have normally been removed. It typically opens up quite easily. Just like that. And right away, what do I see? Something purple. And some more purple over here. Definitely still has liquid in it. Don't really see anything across the back. Of course, the top is bowed. But let's go ahead and get all the Torx fasteners out of it. Some more liquid, liquid damage over here. Let's go ahead and get all the Torx fasteners out of this and get the top completely off of it. Yeah, someone's had that one out too. And uh, a couple of them are missing. Okay. One's in diagonally. <laughs> I think this went to Best Buy. Yeah, don't go to Best Buy. I see that it's actually missing the four screws for the heat sink for the processor. Well, let's just go ahead and look and see what we have inside. Well, I don't really see any liquid damage on this side. See a tiny little drop on the bottom of the DVD player. Oh, and I certainly see some corrosion going on here. Let's zoom in on it. Well, there's the stain from the top side of the board at least. It doesn't look too terribly bad. Should be able to be cleaned up quite easily. That's the only defect that I can see on the top side of the board. But like I said, somebody else has been into this. Let's take a look at the bottom side of the board now. Hey, it looks like an angry monster. But anyhow, this is the spring where the microprocessor mounts. Keeps constant pressure between the processor and the heat sink. And if I look over here, somebody's tried to pry this thing off and they slipped and it goes all the way across over to here. But luckily I don't see any damaged components. I don't see any problems at all. And if I come down here, right here is where the big coil mounts. And these are the plate throughs that may have been damaged by the corrosion. So I'm gonna to try to clean this off a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with just some regular water and a paintbrush. Now it's moistened, but not soaked in water. I'm not really worried about damaging any of the components because it doesn't work as it is. But that is the only defect I can see on the whole board. I've even looked over the power supply and it looks just fine. So I've dried the paintbrush and I'm just gonna use it to wick some of the water up. I'm just gonna do this two or three times. I'll just take some compressed air and blow the little paintbrush particles off the board. And I think we'll be fine. We'll plug it in and see if it even turns on, who knows? Well, after cleaning, I don't see any significant damage whatsoever. Even the conformal coating of the circuit board has not been damaged in any way. So I don't believe that was the issue in the first place. I've looked over the entire board, including under the heat sink, even with a high power flashlight and a magnifying glass. I've checked over all the BGA chips that I can easily access, all of these RAM chips right here. There's a whole bunch of them that go all the way around the processor and they all look really good. I don't see any issues with those. I don't see any corroded balls underneath. I looked over all of these on the back side. I haven't seen any issue with this thing whatsoever. I think they might have just been scared with the word water damage. But I think at this point I'm just going to plug it in, see if the power supply is actually making voltage, and we'll see if this thing even tries to power up. Well, I may have just inadvertently stumbled over the most important clue right here. Look at this connector. It's got crud spilled all over it. All that is sticky, gooey mess. This is the connector that connects, you can see the eject switch right here. Might possibly be the power button. There's a remote control receiver right here. There's a little uh, Bluetooth module it looks like right there. See a droplet of something or other right there? Yeah, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and clean this board off. 
and then we'll try to power it up. I was just going to try to loosely assemble this thing on the bench and see what it did, but I think before I do that, yeah, there's some more crud right there. All of the components seem to look pretty good, except for right down there. There's some crud, whatever uh, EG9 is. But I'm going to go ahead and clean it off because EG7 doesn't have it and EG9 does. All right, well, there's the connector all nice and cleaned up. All the schmoo washed away. And let's go ahead and take a look at that part. What was it, EG7 on the other side of the board here? There's EG9 all cleaned up. There was a bunch of schmoo on it before, all gone. Looks very, very much better. I don't see any defects on this board at all. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug all these boards back on the unit. We'll go ahead and give it a test fire and see if it does anything at all. Okay, so I just have it loosely assembled right now. I'm going to go ahead and give it some AC power and see if anything happens at all. And the fan does bump. That's a good sign. Let's hit the power button and see if we get a light over here at all. I do get a light, then the light goes off. I don't have a hard drive or the DVD drive connected at this point, so I'm not sure if that's normal or not on one of these units. Well, let's try to hook up the hard drive and see if it makes a difference. Okay, I do have the hard drive and the DVD drive connected at this point. And I don't get a power light this time. I get the beep. There it is. And then it shuts down. It acts like it's going to work. Yeah, it tries to work and then it shuts down. Let's measure the 12 volts coming out of the power supply and just make sure the power supply isn't faulting for some strange reason. So I do see 12.02 volts. Let's hit the power button. Let's go on min max. I'll go on minimum. Nope, not the power supply. 12.01 is the minimum. So something else going on in this thing. Well, the buttons and everything are working, but over my head, I don't know. I'm not an Xbox repair person. Well, I thought I'd try one last thing. So I went ahead and I popped off the heat sink, cleaned off all the thermal compound, and I popped this whole board into my dishwasher to run a full cycle on it to clean any contaminants that might be on the board off of the board. So next, I'm gonna hook it back up, see if it made any kind of a difference. Okay, well, let's see if it made any difference at all. Power on. The fan still bumps just as before. Power switch. Nope, no difference. Actually stayed on for about three seconds that time. Then it shut off on its own. You even heard the on tone and the off tone. That time very short. Well, unfortunately, this is the end. Unsuccessful completely. Not a successful failure, just an unsuccessful repair. Like I said, I'm not that familiar with Xbox repairs. I don't know what to look at. Anyhow, I'll be giving this back to my customer unrepaired at no charge. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we could try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. If anybody has any ideas, please let me know. Everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.